Hello everyone, I have another unboxing for you. This time the Anvil Carrick in its Expedition variant. A model kit manufactured by JRDF. Cost point is around 180 euros for this 1 to 500 scale model. And the model arrives in the same box as usual, with a nice sleeve around it. As a nice picture, I can't tell right now if this is a screenshot or a renderer. So, comes with the same limitation sticker on the side. Some pictures on the back. Nice another in-game picture and some pictures from the model parts, not all of them of course. And some legal blah blah on the last side. So let's take a look inside what you will get for your money. Since I managed to purchase the number 6 of 500, I was also with it. I was with this under the first 10 buyers of it, and so I have a little bit more in my box, like my name and the numbering. As usual, the magnetic locked box, very nice. Inside we have a big envelope. Inside the envelope you will find a certification card, this time in silver. You can remember the gold ones. With the number on its back and the signatures of Kelts and JR. Some sanding paper and a small amount of stickers. Another thank you card. And the big star of this time is the manual. But the nice thing is about this manual, it has the shape of the little, uh, what are these called? The little brochures when they announce a new concept ship and is made up like one. So it has a little bit of in law text in it. The usual pictures on how to assemble the model. And another piece of fluff. More assembling pictures. A little picture of the captain's cabin, which is nice. A little bit technical stuff. And that's it. What is really a really nice touch to these uh, manuals now. As a little, um, I don't know, informations or whatever this is around almost all of the pages. Like Envil Aerospace is a human spacecraft manufacturing corporation founded in 2772. And so on. So they really put use for the space, and I hate this quotation, cut it out. Ugh, I don't know. So that's all. They really have developed to all the previous manuals. So let's take a deeper look inside. Yeah, doesn't look like much on the first layer. It 
since it is a Karak Expedition variant, all the windows came in orange, or, yeah, well, more of a red tinted glass. It is a nice color. Um, you can see all the print lines on them. For those who don't want to have this uh, little, I don't know what it's called, um, not clear see-through material look and want to achieve a more see-through one, you can sand it down with a fine sandpaper and then clear coat it. It will look like, uh, do I have some example here? It can look in the end more like that one. This is also 3D printed. Was sanded multiple times and then clear coated. And you can achieve the same look with this one here. So, your decision. And we have a set of turrets. The turrets now are coming in different shapes. This is because some are sticking out and some aren't. Obviously for diorama purposes. So you can decide if you want to have them out or in. And that's why you're getting so many of them. Obviously the character don't have so many turrets on the sides. But maybe you can beef it up a little more. Here we have a little pack of accessories. Two Pisces, a rover, and another set of turrets. The Pisces comes in uh, two variants. One is with landing gear out, and the one is in flying mode. Also very nice. And we have here the ah uh, uh, yeah the loading ramp and the antenna. It's a big set of antenna. <laughs> yeah, it looks fine. Uh, and it also has the little clamps which come out on the side and grab the last bit of loading ramp, which is a nice detail. Can't speak for details for the antenna, we don't have them in game yet. Um, another set of passes could be. Uh, are these, uh, yeah, I think this is uh, uh, part of the container on the belly. And we have here the engines in two variants. The one variant is obviously for being painted, the other variant is for all these fancy guys who can put LEDs inside and make it glow. And this is something I really appreciate JRDF for. They are thinking about the end customer and what they maybe will do. And they deliver it with a bit of forward thinking, which is really nice. Not many are doing this. And you don't have to mod it that much or reprint some parts for it only to get it to work. Then we have magnets, more magnets, a little stand, I guess. The named Carrack stick for the application for, of the windows and magnets, I think. Yeah, should be. And of course, part of the top layer is a cockpit. It really looks nice. It's not easy to get it on camera, I guess, with all the intricate, intricate detail on the inside. You can clearly see the seats 
dangling from above and the little console in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And only the cockpit glass is sticking out, so don't mind about the strange greasy look above here. Yeah, this isn't relevant at all. The lines are really nice for the glass. Yeah, I like it. It's not candy, even if it looks like something. Another piece of the stand. So, now we reach the bottom layer. Boring part, stand with Star Citizen logo, nothing special. Another boring part, more stand parts. And then we come to the, uh, the big parts left. The correct body, or at least one part of the body. This comes in a, well, the color isn't relevant, but I like it. I don't know which kind of resin it is, but who cares? It's about the details we have. And the details are really sharp and clear. All the little venting lines are there. All the little thrusters on the sides. The windows, yeah, well, windows, window glass comes in later. And I really like the shuttle hangar bay. This is nice looking. Amazing. Really, I like it. And this is only one part of the Carrick. The other part is this one. Oh yes, it's, it's a big model. A really big one. Oh damn it. Look at all those little, little supports. Yeah, sharp details everywhere, and nothing broke off. This could easily break off in transit, but it hasn't. So it's very well packaged with all the foam inside. Yeah, I like it. And we have ah yes, this must be the upper hangar doors, and I guess the front loading ramp when it's closed. Don't know what these parts are. As always, you JRDF is planning ahead and giving you the options. And even if you want to change them, these will be magnetized. You have the little holes right here. So you can close the shuttle hangar bay, but reopen it whenever you want. Isn't looking as cool as in the game, but yeah, you get the idea. Same for the other parts. The wings. Also very nice. Another pair of wings. This is not a spare part. As we all know, the Carrick will flip it, its wings when it's going into landing mode. So you have one set for flying and one set for landing mode. And we have all the containers. Whoa, this one almost break off. One open, one closed entirely. I guess these are for display outside because you can place them inside this thing. And the others are for Ah, these are for inside, sure, but they also have the little doors. Uh, this is really amazing. Uh, 
and really nice, the one open container also has this walkway inside, really nice. Yeah, where is the support? Could be a bit hard to get the supports off without damaging the walkway there. So, yeah. And the last thing. Some grayish parts of landing gear. That's all. <laughs> yeah, well, boring parts at the end. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, a big chunky model. Which will be awesome looking if painted. Uh, would take me ages to do it. I really have no experience for this, but I will try someday. Damn, all the resin chipping off somewhere. Excess bits. So yeah. Again, 180 euros for a really big printed model. Don't forget, resin isn't that cheap and their printers aren't. So, and only 500 models of the Cairo Expedition will be made. But they have also the normal standard edition of the Carrick, which means you will get one. They aren't sold out and 1000 models, you have enough time to buy one. Don't be in a rush, I would say. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe we'll, we'll see you some next time, I don't know. Have a good day.